Hello everybody, Mel Bellant, the Relationship Wing Girl, and today I'm going to talk about something a little bit different, um, which has been covered by quite a few other coaches and professionals and even comedians, and that is fairy tales and specifically princesses. I'm going to talk about why I do not ever, ever want to be a princess. So you ready to dive in? Okay, first, a princess is usually born of a queen and a king and by default she has no rights and no entitlement. She has obligations and duties usually which are dictated to her um, but as far as having a good time, doing what she wants, everything is prescribed. She is part of a patriarchal system i.e. the king rules, what the king wants to happen happens. It's a low form of prostitution, high class, low form. But basically a princess is at the whim of her father. And speaking of nobility and royalty, they're a bit snobby. They kind of keep themselves to themselves. Only marry within nobility. Well, quite frankly, I think a bunch of those people are a little bit wanky. We've all been to events where people have money and they know it and they're not really pleasant to be around. I don't even want to choose to socialize with them let alone marry into it because daddy said so. Yes, I would have daddy issues for damn sure. Let's speak about the whole, you know, slavery aspect. Shh. Which of course incorporates prostitution. So a dowry, there's a couple of takes in it, depends on where you were from, um, which part of the world and really how kind your parents were. An exchange, a thank you for raising your daughter. A lot of the dowries had expectations and assumptions attached to them. Some of the good dowries meant that if you as the prince did anything that was abusive or disrespectful or that the princess didn't like, the money was actually like a deposit and returnable if the marriage didn't work out. They probably didn't have ABS back then to do the stats and the tracking of how many refunds they had to do because the husband was a bit of a shitbag. I think that could work in today's terms. I think there's quite a bit of abuse and neglect going on in marriages and I wonder if there was monetary attached. It would just maybe pull in the kind of behaviors a little bit. Maybe get them to kind of stop being such asses concept to think about perhaps. Now here's a bit about dowry that shits me. If the prince, if he dies, guess what happens to the princess? She actually gets passed down the line to his family. So she is inherited by someone else in the prince's family. I don't know, but that pretty much sounds like you're a belonging. You're an object that's passed down in the will. Did I say that? I'm trying to record a video. Can you like take your tantrum somewhere else? Thank you. Let's talk about the whole, we are nothing without the men to provide for us. I did research and I watched um, the recent Cinderella movie with the big magnificent blue dress. Apparently it took 4,000 hours to make that dress. And they had to make eight versions because it was like so used in the movie and got a bit tatty. And... It's not real. Anyway, back to women, depending on their men. The, the queens, the princesses, the ladies in waiting, all the females of the court were basically at the mercy of the next king that came in. So if he was an asshole who didn't like you, then you could be imprisoned, burned at the stake. You know, they make up some bullshit about what wrong you've done by them simply because he didn't like the fact that you maybe <gasps> had a mind of your own or <gasps> You had a bit of independence thought outside the box. Whilst the queen had a bit more power, princess, you were nothing. You were at the bottom of the ranks at the mercy of everybody else. If the king wants you to go and visit a prince, we were just objects. We. I wasn't actually a princess, but you know, I did want to be one. All right, let's talk about the expectations of where this comes from. So the movies. Let's talk about the fabulous holiday movies. movies. Because of you, we are all carrying around preconditioned thoughts about what being a beautiful princess feels like, what even being a princess looks like, what we should desire, what we should want, who wins, who's making the money. We've been fed the fairy tale story. If you look at some of the historical, which I have, it comes back to 
Sorry guys, you're not gonna like this. Sorry Christians, you're not gonna like this either. It comes back from the clergy, which of course were men, and they didn't like the power uh, that women could have. They didn't like us questioning and meddling in their affairs. What they said went, yeah, because that's working for them now, isn't it? Churches were the ones also feeding the information to the kings around how they should make the decisions and putting the fear, literally, of God into them, that if they didn't do it the way the clergymen thought, I've always had a problem with religion and they're responsible for me wanting to be a princess when I was a kid. And then for me being unhappy as an adult because no prince came to save me. Because let's get real, my abuse was real, hardships are real. The reason we like these movies is it gives us an escape, it gives us an opportunity to put the, the faith and the power into the fairy godmother. I'm not going to sit around waiting for something to magically happen in my life or to wait for a prince to come along and rescue me on his big white steed, black steed, I don't know. And why do they fall in love so quickly? Like in all the movies, I love you. You don't even know him. You have no understanding of any of his value. Do you know what a value is? You need to understand what those are. And then you need to understand what his are so you see if there's alignment. <sighs> what else did I want to talk about? I want to talk about, I want to talk about the glass slipper. Who the hell in Hollywood came up with a glass slipper? One, super hard to walk in. Two, would chip just a little bit. Three, blisters much, I think. Four, how the hell do you dance in a glass slipper? In the dance shoes I've had to wear, super flexible soles, not solid glass. That doesn't look pretty, it's see-through. You get to see your chip nail polish and whatever else is going on in your feet. About you, I'm not really a feet kind of girl. And the corsets, let's not forget about how uncomfortable wearing a corset day in, day out would be. It's really dark over here. Anyway, why we got corsets to make our tits look big? Who benefits from that? Not us. I don't give a shit about somebody else's tits. Keep your corsets to yourself. That was a bit of a rant. Now the jewels and the sparkles. I like sparkles. They reflect the light and it's pretty. And I'm a girl and I like pretty things. And diamonds do sparkle a lot. Yeah, no, I do want diamonds. But it doesn't mean I'm worthless if I don't have them. And it doesn't mean, get this, I don't need to sell my soul, my body, and or my virginity to get some diamonds. I have a little bit more self-worth than that. Here's a concept. I could make my own money. I could go out and buy my own diamonds. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I just borrowed Nicole Arbon, yeah. Now, let's talk a little bit about the fairy tales. In the fairy tales, we have helpless women, we have cursed women, assaulted women, ducted women. I've been doing some research. Nearly all of them were abused in some way. Did, did you really look at that? You can keep your princess free to yourself. Most of them were um, cursed or involved with a witch cursing. I don't even like the fact that the witches are always the bad ones in here. Or there's ogres, but you know, who likes an ogre? Thing. Let's talk about the rape. Let's get real here. Kissing a woman when she's sleeping in a coma is sexual assault. It's not romantic. No, he just has his wicked way. There's one where he has sex with her. I think it's Sleeping Beauty. He actually has sex with her while she's sleeping. Having sex with somebody whilst they are sleeping. Somnophiliac. It says your perpetrator here. Unable to resist their advances. What a charming prince, charming gentleman he is. A bit crap in a sack perhaps to begin with. That's all folks, see ya!